Hey, Bridge fans, welcome to another episode of the Dexter's Bridge Show. My name is Dexter, your host. I'm sure you heard people's experiences where they go through things that you almost wonder if it were true. Yes, things that are bizarre, maybe mystical, with the twist of the unbelievable. We hear things like that. But the truth is that the world is not built on just simplistic occurrences. Things happen that beat our experiences, our imagination, and even our belief. But yes, things happen. My guest today is somebody who has been through experiences like that. I mean, you will hear from her. Mrs. Margaret Aniso is a professional radiographer, pastor's wife, worship leader, who brings the experience of Jesus to people and enhancing the kingdom of God through worship. She's the co-pastor of the Transfiguration Experience Outreach and she hosts the biannual worship program, Wonders of Worship. Please help me make welcome Mrs. Margaret and Nizo. Thank you for being here. Thank you so much. Yes. By the way, she came here on very short notice. Very short. Good person, you would say. <laughs> Thank yes. you. My producer has told me about some of the things you've experienced. I mean, one of them just beat my imagination. You lost a baby. Tell us what happened. Well, sometime two years into our marriage, we lost our first child. And uh, initially, we just didn't know what was going on. We felt it was a medical condition and uh, there was a list of medical things that the doctors felt was a problem. They suspected. Yes. At a point they said she had meningitis, bronchitis, so many things and we went through the medical route and did various tests and they all came out negative. But one thing that um, I can say I noticed before all those uh, symptoms started coming up was that anytime she slept in the night or in the afternoon she was always screaming and as though she is she's being harassed and I'll pray with her she will go back to sleep but wake up again and will be so frightened and will roll over to where I'm sleeping or where I am and I just didn't understand what it was. Even though I was a Christian of many years, involved um, in prayers, <laughs> committed as a worker in the church, the local church I was mm. in, but there were many things I didn't understand. Yeah. And even when God was trying to tell me those things, I really didn't have an in-depth understanding or knowledge of what I was going through until a child died. Ooh. that began something new in my life. For me, I realized that it wasn't God's fault. There were many questions that came up in my mind. I just said, how can it be that of all my family members, it is me losing my first child? Many thoughts. I was discouraged. I was in pain. I was also in fear, considering the circumstance of our death. But I remember I said to the Lord, I've gone too far with you to want to go back. Yeah. And I remember I sat down in the parlor and I began to just pen down what was coming to my mind. And what I penned down was, Lord, you are good to me. Ooh. There is none like you. That my child has died is not because of you. There's something else I need to know. And that was what I decided in my mind to do, I said, I'll follow you no matter what, in spite of the pain, I will follow you. Several people came around and asked, what exactly killed your child? Why didn't you carry to the hospital and all of that? But that wasn't the issue at hand. Actually, one of the nights when she was so sick, my husband decided to take her to the hospital in the night. I was already pregnant for a second child at that time, so I couldn't go with him. And he went with his niece to the hospital. There was a particular drug that she was supposed to be given slowly over a period of time, but she was given at a shorter period, and immediately she was given that drug, she gave up. But before she even died, somehow I knew she was, you know, she was while gone, at home, yeah. yes, I knew she was gone. And, uh, well, that was the beginning of a story that uh, evolved later. Something you mentioned now, which, as a Christian, it's one of those experiences of our Christian lives that 
we have to be careful with. That is judging God's sovereignty or his power based on the events of our life. Yeah. You see, God doesn't cease to be God because of the things that happen or don't happen with you. When we come to a place of maturity, we understand that God's godness is not on a stand of being judged. Mm -hmm. We're not putting God through a test. No, you know? no, no. He remains God. Yes, he, does. <laughs> he remains God. So, how do you cope? What, what happened thereafter? I was in deep thought, just wondering, Lord, how come all the tests are negative? What killed my child? Why did because you, you were not medically uh, negligent. No, no, no. You I did wasn't. everything and being did, also a medic yourself. Yes, I did all that was necessary. They asked, did you? Because she was having chest issues. In fact, our fridge was always filled up with drugs. One prescription after another and it just didn't stop. But one thing I noticed was that the child became very fearful. And there was no known terminal cause? No, 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 there wasn't. She became very fearful and distant. I would just be wondering what exactly is happening to her child. But after her child died, there was a maid who had lived with us. The, the maid, maid, you mean a house help? Yes, a house help who yeah. had lived with us for some months. The only thing I noticed about that child was that she had this heart that was not like that of a child. Her activities and her disposition wasn't was child. Like a yes, it wasn't yeah. childlike. And I questioned it but didn't know much of what to do. So um, when a child died, we used to pray. My husband wasn't at home. He went to minister in a neighboring state in the north. We were staying in the north at that time. Okay. So I asked her to pray with me in the morning. She refused to pray. That to me was a shock. A child? Yes. How old now? She was about 12 years old. She refused to pray. She was adamant about it and said she would not pray. And I said, well, I'm going to give you six strokes of cane mm. for this disobedience because this is the law in this house. Why don't you want to pray? She didn't have anything to say. But it occurred to me before you, you give her these six strokes of cane, just, just say loudly, I covered this, <laughs> this cane with the, the blood, blood of, of Jesus. Jesus. Okay. It sounded, it didn't make it sense. It sounded funny to yes, you. Yes, it didn't make sense, mm. but I did it. Mm. I said, for this, I'm going to give you six strokes of cane, and I covered this cane with the blood of Jesus. Mm. And I told her to bring out her hand, and I gave her, I, I hadn't even given her up to six strokes of the cane, just about three strokes, when she began to cry so much. She cried so much, and I wondered in my heart, I didn't beat you so hard, why are you crying so loud? And a lot of tears. So I said to her, why are you crying? Tell me, why are you crying? Because I didn't beat you so hard. She began to confess. She said to me, I killed your daughter. And Ooh. this is the process for which we killed. I said to her, how did you kill? She started telling me in details how our child was killed. I was shaken, confused. In fact, I had never in all my life experienced that. I asked her severally, how did you kill? She even began to tell me in details other things they had done and the coven, the people who were members. I asked a lot of questions. It was very shocking to me. So I called some people I knew to just alert them of what was going on. And when my husband returned from his journey, I mentioned, I mentioned and she repeated the same thing. <sighs> she repeated the same thing. And the question that came to my mind was, how can this happen under my nose? I've been in church, I'm a worker, I'm praying. It's, it's hard to believe, but it began a journey of seeking God and knowing Him better. There's this thought that has been going through my mind. Not, not, not a thought, really. Yeah. It, something the Holy Spirit was ministering to me, yes, a, a few days ago. It was about the details of what we call obedience. So there are two things about obedience. There is the pain of disobedience, mm -hmm. and there is the guilt of disobedience. 
Now, we are, we, are, we are more preoccupied with the guilt and the sinfulness of disobedience. I mean, you've done something wrong, and so it's a sin because you've broken God's known laws. laws yeah. But there is a pain or the cost of disobedience, which disobedience becomes known to you when uh, you are aware of an instruction. And you didn't carry, and you didn't out, carry it. And then, then the it becomes a sin. But whether you know about it or not, for not knowing what you should do and not doing it, there's a pain that you're suffering, how be it you're not aware of it. Yes. So you're being a child of God and being unaware of certain things you should do. Mm -hmm. It's disobedience, but you're not going through the guilt because you didn't know about it. But the pain is what you suffered. Yes. Because not knowing what you should do in God, certain steps should you take. Yes. And then not being able to avert what should, should have been. Should have been averted. Ig exactly. Ignorance is not an excuse. Yes. And ignorance is unrighteousness. Yes, it is. So you pay for your ignorance. You know, when this happened, it actually made me to seek God, <laughs> to seek God and to know what actually went wrong. You know, it made me to seek God more and begin to inquire about God because... And about his walkings, his ways, his really. About his walkings, yeah. about his ways, because... Many of us are just activity prone, but we mm. do not know God. We don't have a working, viable relationship mm. with God. God was t trying to tell me things, but I just didn't know. Okay, I, so you would say there were signs. Really? Yes, there were signs. Okay. The, one of the signs is at least getting to know that this girl is not having the heart of a child of a child is something that I, my spirit man should be aware of to know that something is not right for the bible says that jesus did not know people you know by the flesh yes so mm. it's always good when we are relating with people go beyond the flesh know them for who they are and i didn't know that the spirit of god was trying to tell me this is not Point something to yes you. this is not who this child is mm. I didn't know but <laughs> after that time were there other maids that lived in our house sure they were so you didn't rule out having house helps no 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 I didn't rule out because I was now equipped you see madam this is the difference between <laughs> being suspicious and being discerning People don't understand being, the difference between being suspicious and having a spirit of discernment. Yeah. Suspicion mean, means having this blanket disposition that anybody is capable of doing evil yes. and actually wants to do you evil. And you become afraid. Yes, become afraid and maybe paranoid. Yes. But discernment means relating with people innocently, but having the trigger or having that red flag that something is wrong with yes. a particular person, that's where the Holy Spirit is ministering. Yeah. So it means you didn't become a blanket, suspicious, no, no, and paranoid no, no. person. No, no, no. I did not. We, we had other maids. And at a point, actually, I had to tell the Lord, I said, whoever comes to my house, I want to be able to be of help to that person. You actually did that? Yes. I said, I want to be able to be of help. That right now, I bear a scar. So I want to be of help to others. It so, not so, so your scar <laughs> now, became, now became like like a memorabilia between you and God. Say, this scar will not withdraw my, my, my godliness. It will make me no, become no, it will a not. bitter, no, nasty no, person. No, 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 not at all. I rather said, Lord, whoever comes to my house to help, to stay, to leave, you know, it will become a bigger family. I will help them. But you need to give me the ability to help that person and let them be of help, that they will not come and begin to destroy my own home. So after then, we've had several mates, but it has been one uh, episode of exposure. You know, they can't stay because God began to teach me how to raise altars in my home. Uh, you know, altar doesn't mean you carry one uh, physical, <laughs> physical thing. Yeah. No, 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 no. Mm. Your, your prayer your your prayer altar must be viable enough that when people who come in with an unclean spirit of they course. cannot yeah. be sustained so that i began to do and uh, over the years have they come yes have they stayed on no because they were exposed yes the spirit of god in us is mighty enough to expose actually witchcraft is an elementary spirit 
You it know? Is, yeah. Yes, yeah. it's an elementary spirit. So when you are so ignorant, they come in, steal from you, deprive you of joy, cause confusion in marriage, put your heads you know, yeah, against yeah, yes, uh, yes. the other. But when you have a knowledge of God's word and wh who you are in him, in your Christ, identity, yeah. and exercise dominion. You just don't know dominion. Exercise it exercise because you can dominion. have it, but not appropriate it. Yes. You so, see, God doesn't just invade your space. And uh, like I said, he's not, he's, he's not a bully, he's not a bandit. He will no. not just come and match the door. <laughs> God works with your will. Yes. So, the finished works of Christ are there. He has done everything. You don't need to do anything differently. Oh. But you must be able to take what he has done and appropriate it over yourself. Yes. 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 We also had other experiences of maids that came in and uh, sometimes so committed in the church, yet they have an unclean spirit, mm -hmm. you know, and are, uh, they are intentional about what they are doing. In the very intentional. They are intentional. Very, very intentional. In fact, one one particular one, I can't remember her name. You know, she one of the days because my my husband used to go to minister a lot outside of the town, mm. so I was alone with her and the kids, and my ears were open to a conversation, and I woke up. You know, it was like my ears not the physical ears, of course. just open to a conversation. And I went to her room and I said to her, people have been in this house. She said, no. I said, I'm so sure that people came into this house. Who were there? And she said to me, yes, they came for a meeting. I said, in my house. They came for a meeting. <laughs> All right, go back to sleep. In the morning, we'll talk about it. By this time, of course, I was no more ignorant. Of course. Yes, of course. because in the process, it drew me to the closet. It drew me to pray. Mm. And God began to teach my hands mm. to war and my fingers to fight. Mm. Yes, fight for your family. Because the Bible says that the enemy, you know, moves to and fro, seeking whom to the... He may, he may. Yes. Yeah. So you do not allow. Mm. You don't just sit down and be, you know, head knowledge you confess no weapon fashion against me will prosper uh -huh. if your inside is empty what power do you will towards because it's always about the power that works within you within you Everything so that works on the outside comes from the yes inside. so it's not enough to just pray in tongues you mm. can pray in tongues but you don't have the word you will still be empty on the inside you, mm. you 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 must be full of the word because mm. when you are approaching the throne of grace to receive mercy for you know in times of need then you take with you words the bible says bring with you words of course so when you are empty on the inside you cannot wield that power mm -hmm. this particular maid in the morning i woke her up i said okay now start talking it wasn't because i had um you know sensual power or mm, whatever yeah, no no yeah. no the holy spirit was just, a psychic yeah. yes it, it was the spirit of god it was the spirit of god yeah. so i said start talking just start talking so she started talking, telling me I was on a mission. I said, mission in my house. What was the mission? He started saying a lot of things. Where those things manifest, the things she said she had done, they were manifest. Yes, they were manifest. She started telling me a lot of things. At this point, my second child was not able to walk for a year and five, a year and seven months. And was having diarrhea for months, for months. In fact, when my, my, my father-in-law saw him, he said, what again? What again? What's going on? <laughs> what again? So I said to her, start talking. She started talking and began to tell me in details, you know, the process and procedure of, of um, initiation, her name over there and all of that. For me, I didn't even want to listen to all of, all of those stories. But one lesson I knew was that even when I'm raising my children, I should know that they are not too young for me to tell them about Jesus. For me to tell them, if these people who if the are- the devil could use this very young Yes, people. and they know for certain the time of their initiation, then I am an, an initiate of Christ. I should be able to also bring, to my, bring my children to that point where they are initiated into God. Hallelujah. You know, it's something we must do intentionally. 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 Yeah, don't, yeah. don't think that it is your pastor that your pastor can only help you. But that your pastoral work begins in your house. 
you need to know. You need to know what is going on. The atmosphere in your home, what has invaded the atmosphere, what has come in and encroached, what has trespassed, you know, the walls that you have built by the fire of the spirit, of what has, you know, has trespassed into the, you should be aware your spirit should be conscious enough to know something is going on and the spirit of god helping you because he is our helper yes he's our instructor so she began to confess of course we had to take her home have there been many others yes there have been others that god has also helped me you know to extend you know help to who notice that christian people who notice that their children something was wrong in fact, there's one particular one. The, the lady is my friend and came and met me and said, I noticed that my daughter is becoming very rude and doesn't eat her food, that, you know, lunch pack. And she's tried to, you know, question her, but she's becoming very rude. Something is wrong. So when she came to the house, she, I said to her, bring your child. She brought the child to the house. And as we began to talk, the child started crying and telling us in detail again the initiation rite and what they call her and how they call her out from her room. At a point I asked her, I said, do you know the people in the coven? She said yes, that her teacher, one of her teachers is a member. I said, can you take me to the, <laughs> can you take me to the house? She said yes, but of course that wasn't a, a mission. The mission is to set her free. And we began to pray. In fact, when she started confessing, the mother was so angry. Ah, I said, no, it's not. The wrong approach. I said, that's the wrong approach. It's not, the, it's not you that made her to speak. It is the, the Spirit Holy Spirit. So you cannot now finish in the no, flesh no, no, what no, the Spirit no, has started. No, you cannot. Mm. You cannot. And so the child is grown up now. And I believe she must have even graduated. Have from you school. noticed, have you noticed that the devil somehow was aware of the destiny God was committing to you and your ministry mm -hmm. and came early yeah. to frustrate you. Of course. So it wasn't just like a random no, thing. No, 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 no. The devil no. was aware there's a ministry on this life and this family. And since you are called to families, you had to start by frustrating your own family. Yeah. Exactly what happened. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And uh, another thing we should get to know is that witchcraft walks through, um, how do I, one, ignorance. Uh, when, when you know who you are in Christ, then you can be able to attend to whatever it is they seek to do. Um, another thing is that they walk in, um, how do I call it, more or less they leave certain um, things that continues whatever afflic mm -hmm. affliction. So sometimes they can leave your house, but they are still doing certain things. So you must be able to know. And the Spirit of God can open your eyes to know it and grant unto you victory. You see, this whole discourse of demonic activity, demonic affliction, uh, demonic possession, that again is, is a word that many people need to come to understand, but I'm not delving into that. Mm. The whole um, uh, issue or area of demonic activity, something that Christians need to understand. How it works, what opens the door to these things, especially um, parental or generational exposure, these things are real. And you know what the devil does? When the devil doesn't want the church or believers to understand an area and be effective in it, he goes to pollute or bring excesses in that area. Yeah. So I see many churches, many Pentecostal oh. churches, who are very ignorant of the demonic area because of all that excessive Excesses. activities that people mm. have done in the demonic and deliverance area. Yeah. Like, there is no specialized ministry no, 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 called the deliverance every Christian, ministry. Every Christian. Because for every time Jesus preached the gospel, he healed and he delivered. Yes, It's a combo package. So when people now make deliverance a ministry and now bring many excesses and extremes, People now cast as passions yeah. and they now what we call they now quench the spirit in that area. So when they quench the spirit in that area, the, the, the demonic activity now fester. Yeah. People now, now shy away from the activity of deliverance yes. and casting out devils. Actually, the domain of 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 Satan is darkness. So when you are ignorant about certain areas, 
he, he there's, makes, a, there's, a, there's a shadow yes, yes he makes because his, there's no light no there's no light area. so he makes his domain there mm -hmm. in your life it's like allowing a visitor or a friend to just know your parlor and doesn't have access to, to your, your kitchen to your kitchen or to your, your bedroom, bedroom. Yeah. yes some of us certain areas of our lives we we have allowed the enemy to have a dom a, you know domain a domain yeah. there um, and you see the bible says that we should not be ignorant of the devices of the enemy and, and, and the word device is is wild wild tricks, shenanigans yes so the devil uses tricks actually of course yeah. he says as a Christian, don't be an ignoramus, if there's any word like that. Don't be ignorant. It's a dangerous thing to be an ignorant <laughs> Christian. Yes. See God magnified. See his finished work. Know it. Know your right, your identity in him. And exercise that dominion. Yeah. Yes, you have to do that. Yeah. And when you do that, yeah. the enemy will flee and cannot be sustained or cannot thrive around you. Imagine being in your living room and a pig comes in through the door into your living room and you say in the name of jesus pig hey pig <laughs> hey pig leave leave pig will not leave you you need to get up and exercise authority authority that has been delegated to you you need to do that until you get up and perhaps take a stick because that one is a physical pig yeah, yeah, and say yeah. get out get out from here you cannot the pig may even sit down there. Exercise that authority and they cannot stay. Mm -hmm. Exercise that authority and the victory that God has already secured for you, procured for you, will be yours. But when you sit down and think that some people are pastors, you are not a, you don't have the call yeah. to speak for yeah. the word of God, then you will be defeated and many other ugly things may happen around you. We are meant to labor in prayer. We are meant to know him and walk, have a viable relationship, not a dead one. Mm -hmm. We are meant to relate with God. For within us is that greater one that lives to instruct us, to guide us, to guide us to that place of victory. And it is our right in Christ. You know she's a pastor and she can preach this whole <laughs> show over. But like I said before, you can't afford to be an ignorant, lackluster, no, no, lazy, chicken-hearted, lily-livered Christian, just coasting and not understanding the, the, the intricacies of our faith in Christ. And you should mention something, and I believe it's very correct, that our faith and our spirituality is voice-activated. Yes. If you've not spoken it, you can't appropriate it. No. You must speak it, mean it from the inside, and get Things. I want to ask you this question. Go back a little. Mm -hmm. After the death of your of, of your daughter and all the things that followed, what would you say? How did it impact your your, your mental health, your, your mentality? It made me to have courage. Courage is not absence of fear, but courage knowing that God has already won, mm. and made me to be bold. Made me to see myself as one who is a kinsman redeemer. Okay. It made me to be more compassionate because I realized that many people in the church, you know, those kind of things are happening. They don't even know to what extent it has ruined their marriages. So it made me to be more compassionate. It made me to know that um, I cannot afford to live in ignorance. So I have to learn. I have to dig deep into the word of God. I have to make that my relationship with God is not just one that sustains me but one that is viable one that when people after all jesus um when the disciples there were some people that they just their shadow healed them of course uh -huh, i should be a walking viable altar where demons they see me they run because i'm <laughs> you're fire i am fire exactly so you need to be on fire exactly. for the lord mm. your experience undoubtedly moved you closer to God. Of course. Because the pain you went through yielded sensitivity and compassion. And you said it not made you have this compassion and empathy towards people who might have suffered yes. the same thing yes. that you went through. Mm -hmm. And like I said some time ago, God often allows people who have a great destiny to go through certain challenges. So people who God has called to be wealthy people, usually God will allow them to go through the pangs of poverty oh, and lack. 
So what happens is that, so when you get to your big picture, your big day, when you manifest, and you see people going through what you went through, something mm -hmm. happens. Your bowl of mercy is, 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 well is allowed to flow mm -hmm. yeah. because you've been through that. Yeah. The same. So you have this ministry towards people who are afflicted because mm -hmm. you have gone through that. Yeah. There are other aspects of this show that we'll talk about, we'll have her again, we'll have another episode, we'll talk about how it impacted her marriage and how this yielded a new vista of ministry. Thank you for making it to the end of this video. I believe you learned a lot from it. There is more. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe and follow us on other social media platforms so you can see more interesting content and let others see the same thing that you have seen. Thank you.